Hey guys, what's up? Misha from GGD here, and right now I am going to write a song in front of you. I have this little melodic phrase, it's really short, and I'm gonna record that and hope that that spawns a whole bunch of ideas. I guess you guys are gonna be on this ride with me because I have no idea how this is gonna go. The one thing I'd like you to get out of this experience is just to see one way that you can go and write a song and hopefully you'll learn a couple things or hopefully this will inspire you to start writing yourself. There's gonna be bum notes, there's gonna be bad ideas, there's gonna be things I delete, there's gonna be all sorts of mess. I mean, you're gonna be seeing the whole process warts and everything. So what you're gonna be seeing here is genuinely how I record. This is exactly what I do. And in the same way, I had no idea how those ideas would turn out as I started writing them. I have no idea how this one's gonna turn out. So let's go and see what happens. All right, let's jump right in. So I've been jamming around with this little idea. I haven't developed it at all. I really was just jamming around with some pedals last night. So I have no idea how this is going to work. But this is usually where I start from. I'll just have something I've been sitting on and see where it goes. All right. Just kind of a clean sound here. And I want to put some delay in front of it. Get that kind of dirty delay going into the front of the amp there. Let's put some reverb on there. I think this might be a little fast. Let's try. That's pretty good tempo actually. Let's switch that to 130 so it matches up. Um do we want more a little a little more sustain on this maybe? More feedback. A little more mix. So let's just start recording. I am not taking a DI for this because I'm just writing right now and I have no idea what's going to happen. So. Yeah, let's work with that, see what happens. That's just one side there. I don't know if I should double that for the second side. Do an octave. just to double track, but maybe we want to do different things for, for each side. for now. Interesting thing if we do this, let's listen. All right, um, put some drum. 
comes to this maybe now we are using the invasion these are pretty metal right now but let's see let's see where we're at maybe if I lower if I program with lower velocities so what I'm gonna do here is just try to get an outline of this riff so it's a very simple pattern like dun 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 right oops like this you basically that and that that like that Let me just copy that over, and this is going to be the the pulse of it. Actually, where the, the snare goes and how the cymbals accent will really change the context. So I could do something like, um, yeah, let's get something that's a bit more full there. If I do that... Kind of implies that like the phrase resets there, so that's one way of approaching it. And then here it could be kind of interesting. We could actually flatten it out, and make it play through. So you put the next snare there. Then we could have that repeat. So this is very, very basic, but you got to start somewhere. Symbols in this. Let's do like a. And here's one thing we can do. So we take that, maybe grid like this, copy. This is good in Cubase, it makes it programming very easy. And you hear what happened there? That was me actually adjusting it, but it sounds really cool, so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Paint this one there. That actually sounds good leading into the harder hits. Hmm, maybe do an open one there. That'd be a good place for one there. Go place for an open one, maybe. maybe. Let's play with that. Good starting point. And how does this repeat? Cool. Now we gotta move to bass, or we could just use guitar for the sort of counterpoint line. Let's see what we're. Change 
change the context of this a bit. Because it's kind of ambiguous, but there that makes it kind of minor, I guess. Click helps. Bunch of different ways we can go with this, and it'd be almost inter kind of interesting to see what there'll be is just the second line there. sounds like that last chord almost sounds like an alternate maybe we should play kind of straight on this this one you know what, let's get rid of the modulation on this it doesn't get too too crazy it's on the delay trying to get in the habit of letting these things ring out because sometimes you might use it. It might be good for a transition or an ending and then you don't have to retrack it. Especially when you have delays when you cut in, it, it always sounds a bit abrupt. So it's kind of a little, little trick I use sometimes. So what I've been, what I've done here is I've actually taken away that double track when I'm doing the unison, I've replaced it with a with a harmony. And one kind of cool thing I could do if I wanted to, in a sense, get more life out of this is to do half and half. This establishes the theme. That gives context. Now these have very different tonalities, so there's a bunch of options here. I could have this be a variation. This is something that we do a lot, actually. Is This is such a drastic difference that this, in and of itself, with the right counterpoint, could be its own verse, if you will, and then if it came back like this, it would have a completely different context, but it would be the same motif. 
And this is a trick that I like to use a lot to bring the same idea back without sort of recycling it. And you are recycling it, but you're bringing it back with a twist. So it sounds familiar, but it's not repetitive. So let's see if we can figure out what our root notes should be here. I can do this with bass, but since I've got the guitar. the context of this drastically with the root note. Like that's not at all what this sounds. This sort of implies the... And that doesn't sound bad because it's what's being implied. So it might not be a bad starting point. So why don't we get the bass to do that? Just more of a chill part, so we'll just kind of get that going there. So let's listen. It's a two count. I can make it. This could be kind of an interesting thing. Rather than going to that low note both times. That, that resolves nicely. It makes it sound nice and big. So we could do... The first time we could go to the higher note. Octave of it. Just kind of punch in with that. What an aggressive bass tone. Let's fix that. I want this to be a little bit warmer, I think. Uh, let's see what we got here. So, yeah, that generally looks fine. So one thing that you'll see me doing is kind of adjusting stuff and tweaking settings. It almost looks like I'm mixing it. And actually, I started out with a, a template, you know, which has a invasion set up here. Um, it was actually from a, a, a metal template, so that's why I'm adjusting stuff. It was, everything's a little bit intense. Um, and I'm adjusting it because, the, to me, personally, I, I, I'll have arguments with people about this all the time, but to me, personally, the production and the aesthetic of the mix really can drive the point home. There's certain ideas that won't come to life, in my opinion, until you hear it in context. And 
without that context, you might be like, mm, I don't know if this is this is good. So I'm adjusting this just to see how how this is coming together. And I think this is coming together pretty well. So one thing right off the bat, and maybe we should adjust this now, is I do think these drums sound a little bit too metal. But it's kind of tough to make that judgment until you have everything in place. And here I've got some basic stuff in place, right? And this is maybe not going to be the most dynamically intense section of, of this uh, idea. So let's bring that over. Oh, this is kind of a cool thing I can talk about here. So I'm taking down the parallel compression. If you've ever watched my videos on uh, mixing drums, you'll understand how I use that to get some intensity out of the drums, some punch out of specific sections. Uh, most notably the shells without the cymbals getting compressed and sort of interfering with the way the compression interacts. But what I have going here is the same thing, but with um, Decapitator. So this is something that will saturate, parallel saturation. And that can be a good way to like kind of get some saturation. <laughs> out of your drums it just kind of it can grime it up a little bit it's something i use strategically and it can actually make uh drums sound a little bigger because the, the nature of saturation is sort of like evening out your transient so anything that's a little pokey you can get it's, it's like kind of another approach to getting your drums to have a, a bit of character in the mix uh, but i don't need i don't need that very much right now if at all I also think this hi-hat's very loud. And this actually may be a good opportunity to show you how I would turn that down because that is, I don't think I've got very much going in the regular hat, hat mic. Cause I like the way it sounds coming through the overheads way more. Here it's very loud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here. Uh, sorry, that's symbol effects. I'm gonna go to symbol mixer, the overheads. That's where I know I'm hearing too much of it. And I'll just bring them down here. That's the overall level. I mean, another way to do it is you can actually adjust the mapping volume here. Uh, like if I found the exact, this was if I wanted to bring up one articulation. Uh, one thing I'll do is usually bring up the pedal chicks a little bit. In fact, I might just do that now. Just because I found they don't, I, I like them to cut a bit more than they would in real life. Um, but uh, the symbol mixer is a good way to get the overall level in the overheads, for example. Let's see what snares. I, I like this snare, but let's see what else we got. That'd be a touch too low. This will drastically change the sound. It's not bad though. I may still just stick to this. It's kind of because it's lower tune, it's kind of like the 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 Yamaha is very nice, but it's like kind of in your face, and I don't necessarily want the drums to be in your face. I want them to be sort of supporting here. Alright. Now another in interesting thing we could play with is so I've just duplicated that over. It's not long enough for whatever reason. Oh, did I not take it? Did I take those long enough? Just duplicate that over. Easy. And what I was talking about earlier is the, um, the delay kind of cutting off on the repeat. You can hear that very clearly. Sounds like a hard repeat. So let's see if we can find some other notes.
first time sometimes i try to get too adventurous and bad things happen so let's see uh, if we can expand on this at all cool gain out of this. What do we say? Maybe let's try. Actually, maybe we can work with what we've got here. Doesn't even have a cab on it. So put a cab on it. There we go, Misha cab. <laughs> We could do kind of like open, or we could do like the, kind of the palm muted, ringy palm muted. We do those. I always like to tune for those. So. If I'm going to do this, I may retract the bass with a dirtier tone to match the guitar, so it binds. Also, you'll notice I'm kind of following the accents on the kick.
So what I'm doing with these, uh, what I'm doing with this part here is sort of following the the bass and playing the part that is implied. Doesn't sound very good on its own, does it? But. I don't actually like the way that guitar tone sounds, so maybe we'll do open chords. Maybe this should just be more intense. Let's try it again. Since that's the same thing twice, I technically just double tracked it. Bam. Done. Don't have to bore you guys with that. Oh yeah. Cool little trick is if you want it to sound different, if you care about that kind of stuff, just flip it. Bam. Now it's unique. This is an original thought. And we can actually change the intensity of this section. We may actually retract these parts too, but let's, uh, you know, now that I'm hearing it like this, maybe what we do is we keep the variation for this part. What we should do is get more intense for this part. We could go to open hat, we could go to crash. One of the best tips ever, have your uh, grid quantize or just your grid to these buttons so you can just quickly navigate. It's best. And well, we wouldn't do that, we would use the right crash. And this needs to go up in intensity. Have another one of these accents, maybe switch symbol there. So it's just one to four. Should also go up in intensity. Set up the default one to be a bit more there. All right. Another thing we can do here, that's a little intense for that, isn't it? You do a splash. Where's a splash down here? <laughs> 